Hi everyone, my name is Connor McDonald. Follow me on Twitter for information about SQL and analytics and on Ask Tom. Today is the next in our series of the KISS principle, keeping it simple with SQL, focusing on analytics. These are quick two minute sessions to solve real problems, not just wander through the analytics syntax. In this session, we're gonna be looking at aggregations, taking a closer look. A quick recap, we introduced aggregations in the last video when we went through and finally started using aggregation functions such as sum on columns in an analytic context. This session is super important. We're going to take this one a little bit more slowly because there's a couple of key points here that are vital to understand when it comes to using aggregation in analytics. Key point number one, analytic aggregations are calculated, not restrictive. You might be thinking, what do those two terms mean? Let's look at an example. When you do a conventional aggregation, like a sum and a group by, if we look at the summation, because we have a group by, typically the number of rows in the result set is going to be less than the number of rows in the original data. In this case, the employee table has 14 rows, but when we group by department number, our summation dropped down to just three rows. With analytics, that's not the case. When we do an analytic aggregation, notice that we still have 14 rows we actually have the result of the analytic bound to each individual row in the table because there's no group by. What we're getting is aggregated data, but not aggregation or consolidation of the rows. That's a very key point to understand. Key point number two is that there are different types of aggregation to consider. There are actually two kinds of aggregation. Savvy viewers would have seen some of the differences in the previous videos that I didn't ever actually elucidate on, but let's look at them now. There's reporting aggregation, and what reporting aggregation is, is we get the same aggregate value for each row within a partition. Let's look at an example. I've done some of the salary partition by department number, and you can see that for each department, department 10, department 20, department 30, I get the same total value. 10875 is the total salary for department 20, and they get that for every single row in department 20. Same with department 10, 8750, and department 39400. It's the same row, it's a reporting aggregate. A windowing aggregation is where the aggregate may change for each row in the petition. Let's look at an example of that. This is where our final clause starts coming in, the windowing clause, the one we haven't touched on yet. Let's look at our first window and example. Here's our requirement. We're going to consider the oceans and waters of the world. And here's our requirement. I need a running total of the total ocean coverage across the world, largest to smallest. And of course, we need it ASAP. Here's the base data we're looking at. We've got the name of each particular water region, the type of water region it is, and how big it is in square kilometers. Here's our template for analytics again. We're going to be doing the summation of the square kilometers. The partitioning clause we're not going to use. There's no grouping here. The sorting clause is by square kilometer from largest to smallest. And here's our first look at the windowing clause. We're going to be doing rows between unbounded preceding and current row. What does that mean? It means whatever row I'm on, look back as far as possible, an unbounded range as far as possible to sum up all the square kilometers. And where do I stop? I stop at the current row. Let's insert that analytic into our query, and here's our result. To help explain that, let's walk through the rows as we go. The first row is Pacific Ocean. The total is the same as the square kilometers. The running total of all the ocean size is the same as the first row. When I move to the second row, I now have the running total being that of the two previous rows. Why two previous rows? Because I'm going back an unbounded amount. I'm going back all the way to the top of the table. For the third row, it's the summation of all three. And as I keep on going, eventually I'll sum up every single row, because even though I'm down at the Baltic Sea now, I'm looking back an unbounded amount to sum the data up and going forward only to the current row. That's what the windowing clause has given us, rows between unbounded preceding and current row. The aggregate changes per row, and that's where the windowing clause comes into effect, as opposed to reporting aggregation. You can run these sequels yourself to get a better idea of the windowing clause by clicking on the link below. In the next session, we're going to start looking at more and more windows because it's probably the most complicated of the analytic syntax. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, 
to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.